I'm watching Professor Gregory Sadler's um, series that's unfolding right now on anger. Um, and uh, it's fascinating the issues that he raises. Um, one of the more interesting ones that, well, to me at least, uh, that's come up is how anger affects your reason. Um, and it's interesting because I generally, until I started to think about the ideas that he raises, I generally thought of anger as something that's wholly bad, um, that it deprives you of your capacity to reason. Um, sort of Seneca-esque idea, but also, you know, in keeping with my views on the passions that I've sort of osmosed from the uh, Eastern philosophies. But he's raised some interesting points. He says, um, is it possible to get angry for the, you know, for the right reason with the right person uh, in the right amount and for the right time, etc., etc.? And it's interesting, you know, it's, it's, I almost feel like I'm having a dose of my own medicine um, fed back to me, and I like it when that happens, if it's done intelligently. Um, it was not somebody screaming in my face. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> it's interesting. I did a series of videos a while back, kind of infamous and notorious, kind of almost revenge videos that I made, but it was, I don't know, tongue-in-cheek revenge when I started to talk about antinatalism due to an uh, invitation from other people, and I was suddenly swarmed by <laughs> people in a blind rage. And... Um, what I got into was I was sort of deconstructing my own uh, experiences with mood disorder, in particular depression, where I said that your mood will indeed overwhelm your reasoning capacity, uh, your reasoning capacities. It will. Um, no matter how much, hmm, no matter how few problems you have, suddenly you believe that you have just an unendurable massive problems um, and it's it's a way in which your emotions actually can completely take over when it comes to your um, comes to your reasoning capacity you cannot be reasoned with in the normal way simply because your reason is not as it were in the driver's seat now we all know that anger does that to people um, <clears throat> in spite of my YouTube persona I get angry Sorry to be a ethnic generalizer here, but uh, you know I am an Irishman after all, and I get ferociously angry sometimes, and always afterwards I feel so angry at myself afterwards for having allowed myself to get hooked like this. Um, you know, but uh, again, it your emotions and your reason, your I don't know Apollonian and Dionysian are so mutually dependent but antagonistic that it's hard to sort of see in the general run of one's day, one's life, the general non-ivory towerish parts of one's life, which one is actually in control. Now, that's depression and um, or mood disorders in general, um, but the other interesting one is anger and um, reasoning, where your fundamental capacity to reason has been influenced by anger if you're fundamentally driven by anger. Um, I'm, you know, guilt is my big thing. And I think that guilt is a huge driver of anger, but only in, in terms of different angles of guilt, different aspects of guilt. Um, you know, his definition of anger, I think he goes with Aristotle's, where, you know, it's a, it's a painful, unpleasant sensation coupled with a desire to harm or for revenge against a perceived slight against one's oneself or one's friends um, or one's you know people one cares about um, slight <laughs> injustice guilt um, now <clears throat> what can you get angry about what can you what can anger, anger do to your, your ability to think about things, your ability to reason, and what gets precedence in the big massive contradictions that is you? Is it your emotions? Is it your 
sense of injustice, sense of dissatisfaction with the world, with yourself, with life, with everything? Um, or is it a reasoned view of the way things are? Uh, it's never really clear. Um, if you're, in a sense, seeing the world through the eyes of a victim or seeing the world through the eyes of people you identify as victims, which I would say is a fundamentally angry point of view, something is happening that eh, shouldn't be happening in the right world that we all know that, it, you know, sort of even an ideal world that exists, someone has violated these ideals that we have. Um, <clears throat> now, um, anger and perceived injustice, i.e. guilt, I think are fascinating things, and I think that they do overwhelm our ability to reason in ways that we don't even understand. Um, one of the best examples that I've come across is the way that revolutionary movements can give way to furious anger. Um, when I was in university, I was always something of a left anarchist slash far left social democrat. And no offense to anybody who here who is a Marxist, I'm just explaining myself. I used to really get into it with the, with the Marxists. And I would get hooked all the time, or we would hook each other. Because I would think, you just want hate. That's it. That your, 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 your communism, your revolutionaryism, is simply, you want to get those bastards. You know, that's it. That's the extent of all of it. That's kind of the way Orwell parodied the, uh, the communists, the Stalinists of his age. Just kill everybody who's, who causes trouble, and the world will be a much better place. That's not Marxism, I hasten to point out. But that's just one view of Marxism that was, um, and I, I would even argue a very badly perverted view of type of Mar Marxism that was prevalent uh, during the mid-20th century, and he wrote about it. Um, but, you know, you would see this. You would see people who had gone into the really egghead sort of um, intricacies of Marxist theory, and, you know, they're obviously highly intelligent people. But you swear to God, they wake up, you swear to something, <laughs> you swear that they wake up every morning and the, before any other feeling hits them, it's like they're angry. Um, and not in just some irritated, lash out blindly at people angry. I mean a suppressed sort of fundamental rage that is part of their character and seems to be inseparable from it, at least as in the way that it stands at that time, their personality. Um, anger and highly intelligent people um, aren't necessarily uh, mutually exclusive. In fact, I would say that an angry, intelligent person is one of the more intense people you'll, you'll ever meet in your life. Um, I've almost made it sort of my goal in life not to morph into that. Um, I sort of say, I look at people that I identify in my own head like that, and I say, oh, there are worse fates than mine. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting thought, and, you know, uh, just sort of a mild sort of suggestion for Pyro's uh, hangout today, which I may not be able to attend anyway. But he was asking, you know, suggestion, how about that? Um, anger and how it grapples and fights for precedence in the intelligent person's mind with um, otherwise highly developed reasoning capacities. We've all met the very intelligent person who is, or at least looks to us, as a slave to anger. And, the, you know, I'm not even going to say that that's a wrong way to be, because they will sort of say, you're darn right I'm angry all the time. Look at the stuff there is to be angry about, for God's sake. Look at the second time I have dropped the G word. Eh? Um, stupid Catholic education. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, these, are, these are interesting people that you see on the Internet a lot, and, you know, they're not just your usual, you know, rageaholic who's just willing to, you know, ready to go off because somebody handed him the wrong type of coffee in the line at Starbucks. 
I mean somebody who who knows or at least has exercised their intellect extremely well, and they've got a good intellect, um, but it is shot through with rage, and it's a different kind of rage. It's um, it's a highly motivating rage. And it's an active rage that seeks to go out into the world and, I don't know, rage against the world as a necessary part of one's world view. Like I say, your, your stereotypical angry, shoot the bourgeoisie, um, death to the aristos sort of revolutionary is a good example of that, but there are others. And again, when you have your, your analytical or reasonable or reasoned capacities in a struggle with your gut feeling, the reasoning part doesn't always win out, and you don't even necessarily notice it when your reason is being carried away by something else. Um, uh, Gregory Sadler's dealing with this aspect of anger, and he's doing an awesome job of it. I just thought it might be an interesting thing to talk about. I'll leave a link below to the first one of his series.